there's a spy in the grass. The lioness is at the center of literally thousands of newborn calves. is forced to leave her minutes old offspring. She makes a brave and final attempt to scare off this big cat. is now at another's mercy. Why the lioness hesitates to make the kill is unknown. Astonishingly, the calf is imprinting, compelled to treat a nearby warm body as its provider and protector. A very rare and usually fatal mistake. Looks like paradise to us is simply home to some. For most of the year, it's very quiet on the plains of the Serengeti. It's only when the rains fall and the grasses appear that paradise starts to get a little crowded. As wanderers pour into the area, predators strike out at a seeming surfeit of choice. It's open season on fast food. As serenity gives way to chaos, trouble stakes a claim in paradise. In reality, the short grass plains of the Serengeti National Park in Tanzania are, for nine months of the year, areas of peace and quiet. In the distance sits old Donya Lengai, the iconic volcanic mountain that pierces the horizon. Serengeti is a Maasai word, often translated as tending to extend. It is well named. There are water holes here, places for animals to take advantage of. A cheetah and her cubs stop for a drink and an impromptu swim. A distant rumble sends the cub back to its mother. The herd frontrunners are also waterbound. Not far.
are to the birthing grounds now. Although some know them as the killing fields. In this particular area are numerous acacia woodland copses that invite casual grazers. Vegetarian residents browse for sustenance. Some are more zealous than others. The more ambitious carnivores have little to hunt, but manage to survive and bring up young during the long dry season. Opportunists, hungry lions won't be choosy about prey. Giraffe mothers often return to the birthing ground where they were born, and twins are all too rare. But those long legs make giraffes, even the youngsters, unusually swift. Impala, the resident herd here, stay in peak condition by an explosive celebration of graceful movement. It's believed that stotting evolved as a way to advertise fitness to deter predators. It also alerts other herd members to danger. It may even be simple play. They can run over 50 miles per hour and are one of the most abundant antelopes in Africa. But here, as a small herd, the impalas pale in number compared to what's coming. Cheetahs here have powerful competition. She targets antelopes like Thompson's gazelles. Killing is the easier part of the process. Keeping your prize trophy is the hard part. She doesn't have the might to oust a hungry hyena, but she can give him a few scars for his trouble. It's imperative to keep the cubs at a distance.
her offspring know to stay well away. Time to find another hyena-free area. Not too far away, the vanguard of the most famous land migration in the world starts the long march south. Cloud chasers by nature, the herds consist of mostly wildebeest. For the predators in the area, the two million visitors are most welcome. For the opportunist, now is always the right time to make a killing. As the herds turn south for the final push, the heavens release their stores. Joining the wildebeest on the march are zebra and Thompson's gazelles. The resident Impala are about to receive a few million guests. at the end of the rainbow glistens. Once the grasses start growing, the extraordinary mass of grazers will settle for a short while. Some wander into the acacia woodlands. What was once a quiet haven for herbivores is now an African stadium of noise. Most of the herds will now gather on the short grass plains just beyond the woodland. Each heavily pregnant cow, by some primal instinctive compulsion, will drop its calf in the narrowest of windows. It's the following two to three weeks that the predators have been waiting for. Potential prey all, delivered in their thousands. On the plains, new life starts appearing. Three hundred to four hundred thousand calves are dropped creating an abundance of food that is too much for any local predators. This ensures a greater percentage survive long enough to pass their genes to the next generation. A newborn wildebeest calf is a lightning fast survival expert. It's on its feet in a few minutes, and after five, can run with the herd. A 
as Thompson Gazelle calves swell the ranks, wildebeest reveal why their nickname is Clown of the Plains. If you make a spectacle of yourself, you're bound to get noticed. Hyenas are far from being simple scavengers. Hyenas are cunning and cooperative hunters. Also in place is a strict hierarchy, and it's the females who are in charge. For private dining, you can't get better than a treetop cafe. Leopards regularly carry prey up into the lower branches to feed unmolested. They have the strength to carry well over their own body weight. More slender, but just as much trouble to the herds as the leopard, is the cheetah. The young are always more at risk. Back at the herds, there's a spy in the grass. The lioness is at the center of literally thousands of newborn calves. mother is forced to leave her minutes old offspring. She makes a brave and final attempt to scare off this big cat. is now at another's mercy. Why the lioness hesitates to make the kill is unknown. Astonishingly, the calf is imprinting, compelled to treat a nearby warm body as its provider and protector. A very rare and usually fatal mistake. <clears throat> For some mysterious reason, the lioness tolerates the behavior.
Attention diverted, the calf is left alone. is simply not hungry enough to give chase and the calf makes its move. A black-backed jackal is curious. He just wants to play. But the path back to the herd and its mother is never smooth. Somewhere in there is a mother bereft of her calf. recognize their own calves by scent, but successful reunions here are rare. Wildebeest bucks are territorial and will often see rivals off. Given their concentration, the territories are not widely spaced. Youngsters in the herd will always try their strength against older males. Females with calves keep well out of their way. The nearest bucks get to actual violence is their propensity for clashing horns. The fights are mostly for show and the participants are rarely hurt. Rarely seen, leopards mate over a period of days. Copulation typically occurs once every 15 minutes, night and day. The female is in estrus over seven days, and once conception occurs, two to three cubs will be born after a three-month pregnancy.
The shallow river which formed over the dry soda bed is now a trap in waiting for the unwary. As delicate flamingos feed, the heavier wildebeest is sucked into the mud. Its calf hasn't got the experience to know to stay away. But it's not as heavy as its mother, so avoids her fate. Predators now have two targets to choose from, the stuck and the motherless. Perhaps understanding that the mud is as much a danger to them as it is to the wildebeest, the youngster is targeted. Even reinforcements can't catch the calf. The pride stays near the water. There will be other opportunities. Exhausted, the calf rests, but a lone distant figure, recently released from an early grave, is there to greet it. Cheetahs sometimes hunt in what's known as a coalition. This is a cooperative group of brothers that coordinates an attack. This is a fit adult Thompson's gazelle, no easy prey. Synchronized stalking. The leader commits to the chase. This land mammal can only maintain his top speed for 30 seconds or so. His audience is unimpressed. Interspersed within the main wildebeest herd are small herds of Thompson's gazelles. Any success they have in outrunning cheetahs is rooted in the animal's ability to outlast their pursuers at high speeds. They can also zigzag, an advantage that can be the split-second difference between a fatal trip and living to run another day. They are known to migrate to areas of tall grass, places where it's hard to spot trouble.
En route to a water hole, the Tommy's intention is to cross it. You never know what lurks beneath the surface. A brave or foolhardy female takes the plunge. And then just as quickly decides against it. As the rain clouds move south, the massive herds start pouring out of the acacia forests. They will form a thick line that will snake south into the Ngorongoro conservation area. An arena of three weeks of constant grunting is quietly reduced to the pleasing chirrup of resident birds. In the forest, impala males are showing their prowess. While the females and the young look on, the males begin tongue flicking, a sexual behavior that precedes a roundup. But there are always females who play hard to get. The thrill of the chase can soon become the exhaustion of the chase. And sometimes you just have to let one go. And if your neighbor bags the one that got away, you stay with your own herd. Young wildebeests that find themselves detached from the masses risk paying a high price. The coalition is hungry. Fatally outnumbered, the wildebeest succumbs, but it won't be too long before the hunters are ousted. For the vultures, it's a waiting game. If you venture too far from your herd, you're inviting trouble. Watched from a safe place, a foolish male leads his females onto the dry part of the soda lake. Without tree cover, they are all exposed. The herd is spooked and scatters in all directions. there is enough confusion for escapes to be made. Most of the Impalas make it back home to safety. But 
but in the frantic dash for cover, one Impala has broken an ankle. It is soon isolated from the small herd. Individuals in a herd instinctively move away from an animal not moving or behaving in the normal way. Injured with no possible chance of recovery, it's a beacon for predators everywhere. She won't last the night. The Impala neighbors, the giraffes, don't usually move around in great numbers. This bachelor herd will disperse as the bulls get older. Dominance for mating rights is settled with one of the most brutal fights in the animal kingdom. Each blow of the horned head has massive force behind it. These two young males seem to be sparring, testing each other's strength. skirts of the territory, the adult cheetahs have followed the stragglers in the Great March. It's their last chance to stir up trouble before the herds leave their range. As a team, they strike at the heart of the small herd and single out an adolescent. Repeatedly standing his ground, he sees off trouble. In the months to come, the migration will head towards the famous Grumeti River, where the herds will run the gauntlet of giant Nile crocodiles. By leaving the short grass plains, the small part of paradise contained within the Serengeti, the massive herds of wildebeest, zebra, and antelope take their troubles with them.